Hey cool geeks, this is A. Marie and I am doing my August book haul. This book haul is, I can't even say in part, it's completely thanks to my girl Christina at The Lushables. She also has a blog, Christina Reads YA. She sent me so many books. I'm going to try to get through them pretty quickly so the video isn't too long. Most of these books are ARCs from BEA. She also sent me the hardcover of The Golden Specific, which is book two of The Glass Sentence, a middle grade series, which is supposed to be incredible. So without further ado, let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I have to have my little disclaimer slash note. These are in no way recommendations. I cannot say these books are good, amazing, terrible, or any of that because I have yet to read them. They're only books that I was interested in reading, so keep that in mind. They may sound really cool to you and you may want to pick them up, which is great because they're coming out soon. I think a lot of these are coming out actually in September and there are a couple that come out in January, but I cannot give the Amory stamp of approval because I have yet to read them. So I repeat, these are not recommendations, just books that have piqued my interest and may pique yours as well. That said, let's move on to the book haul. The Marvels by Brian Selznick. I can't remember the exact title, but I think it was The Adventures of Hugo Cabret. They made a movie of this. This book actually has, the first half consists of illustration and the second is prose. And then it looks like the end is a mix of the two. So we have two separate stories and they join together. I know nothing about the story going in. It's just he's a celebrated author and I thought the concept was really cool. It's a beautiful book, beautiful packaging. And then if I love it, I will double back and read The Adventures of Hugo Cabre. I think it is. Yeah, Hugo Cabre. This is Nightfall by Peter Kujawinski and Jake Halpern. This is about a world in a world where, no, you know, in a world where sunrise only comes every 28 years, you don't want to be left behind on an island alone in the dark. That's all I know about it. It does raise questions though, because one of the questions is if everyone is leaving the island to go away for this long period of darkness, why even bother coming back? I mean, by that time, I would think you just really like where you are and why would you come back to an island where all this stuff is happening? And then it makes you wonder why, is this on a different planet? Because the sun doesn't affect one planet. I don't know. These are pretty basic questions. So I'm assuming that they're answered in the story. It's supposed to be very gripping. I'm really looking forward to it. Reading Stephen King has reawakened my appetite for horror, but that's also a very hard, high bar the Stephen King and Joe Hill, so we'll see how it goes. The Scorpion Rules by Aaron Bow. I believe this is book one in a trilogy. This is about a world in a world, in a world where children of politicians are taken away to a certain location where they can live together, learn together, in the hopes that their parents don't do something crazy like start a war, because then they'd be killed. This is a very interesting concept. This actually did happen in human history. Children of leaders who were defeated were often taken into the home of the winners, basically, and lived alongside the princes or princesses, treated very well, but there was still that acknowledgement that they are essentially captives. I've actually been reading this nonfiction book called The Rival Queens, which I haven't finished yet. And in that book is an account where a king is basically defeated and he's taken to the foreign palace and he actually doesn't exchange. He requests that he be freed in exchange for his son coming to stay at that foreign palace. And that's the thing, you would think that a parent wouldn't do that, but he was really, really excited about it. He thought it was a really good idea. And he sent his, his son there, or his, I think, I believe his two sons to that foreign land, and they actually weren't treated very well. They were actually very hungry and they were kept in cells, kept in solitary confinement for long periods of time and kind of got messed up. But the king was king again and he was pretty happy, never mind what happened to his sons. So it'd be very interesting to read and see what happens in this story. One of my main thoughts about this was in a world like this, where this is definitely status quo, where, where you know very well that when you go into politics, your child will be taken away from you. It's not if you're defeated, the child is taken away. It really made me wonder what kind of person would go into politics in the first place, knowing that this would happen to your future children. I don't know, they'd have to pretty much sacrifice their children's welfare right from the start. So what kind of psychology is behind that? We'll find out. 
Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan. All I know about this book is it feels like a mystery. It feels a little reminiscent to me as far as the synopsis goes to We Are Liars, which means that it's better to know as little as possible going in. It's a revenge story. A girl is on a boat or a yacht or on a cruise. Her family is killed or her parents are killed and she's trying to figure out who did it, how it happened. And somehow I think a romantic interest might have been involved. That's all I know. That's what's on the synopsis and that's actually a lot. I am the daughter of murdered parents. I am the friend of a dead girl. I am the lover of my enemy and I will have my revenge. Sounds pretty interesting. My mind isn't blown by the synopsis, but I have enough interest to check the story out. Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. Ray Carson wrote the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy, which I began a couple of years ago, but then I ended up putting it down. I may pick it up again. I, it was really good, but I think somewhere toward the end I lost interest or something. I know I read like 200 or something pages, but I think I may revisit that story. This book is about a girl who can detect gold beneath the ground and I think we're kind of in that era of the gold rush so of course someone who has powers such as hers would be highly sought after and possibly be in danger. The prose is supposed to be beautiful so I will find out. I didn't even read one page of this but uh, Christina really liked this book so hopefully I like it too. Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. This is the first of two books. It's a duology. And she also wrote the Darkest Minds trilogy, which I've yet to read. There are many elements. Time travel, a little bit of romance. We're taken back to 1776. Very intriguing things. I think the girl is a violinist. Maybe she's like a musical prodigy. The only reason I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to read this is because this book was presented pretty, pretty early before some major changes. The author said that there are going to be pretty big changes as far as world building and plot and I feel like I'd rather read it when it's all together. Although ARCs tend to have small changes because this one will have major changes I may wait for the actual book to come out. You can only read a book for the first time once. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in a new trilogy that's in the same world as the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So this is part of the Grishaverse. This book takes place in a different land. We didn't get to spend any time in Kerch, or if we did, it was very brief. But this book takes place in that merchant city. This has been pitched as Ocean's Eleven meets High Fantasy. I haven't even read a single page of this, but I'm looking forward to digging in because I love when you read one series and the author expands the world and it just makes the experience for both series so much richer. Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is book two of The Diviners. I just, I look at this book and I just want to fall into it. I'm so excited to read this book. I haven't read The Diviners yet, but the only reason I've held off is because I'm so excited about the story. I really want to read it and it's taken two to two and a half years between book one and book two and I don't want to be left hanging wondering what happens. The books are supposed to be so fantastic I wouldn't want to wait that long until book three but it looks like that's happening anyway because I do intend on reading book one and jumping right into book two this year. To let you know the elements of this story without giving anything away which I couldn't anyway because I don't know the synopsis of book two because I haven't even read a book one and that can you know you can get spoiled that way but we're in the 1920s think flappers think music we're talking race the city of New York culture and the supernatural specifically the occult and psychics I can't wait and finally the golden specific book two of the glass sentence actually I'm not sure if that's the name of the trilogy I think it's called the map makers trilogy but don't quote me on that I'm really looking forward to getting into this as well I've heard so many great things this story is basically in a world in a world where continents have been split apart by time Europe is in one time Asia's in another time the United States is in another time Africa has a time of its own these are different eras happening simultaneously the interesting thing is that eras are defined by culture and the mixing of people for the most part. If we look at our current time and we look at well, modern times and ancient times, they were all influenced by trade, etc. So I'm really wondering how one time would look if it were never influenced by this other culture because they're on a different timeline, especially if they haven't gotten to the timeline of this country. Do you understand what I'm saying? For instance, if you didn't have the influence of Africans in the Americas, you wouldn't have the blues and rock and roll and hip hop. You wouldn't have a lot of those elements. So 
how would this culture look if they had if that hadn't happened because we're on a different timeline i'm really interested interested to see how that's really going to work out but i've heard great things about this and yes now i'm really i'm really curious about that how is that addressed in the story i don't know we'll see i don't know in which time we begin the story and wh where the protagonist is as far as where in time she is let alone what land she's you know living in so we'll see but i'm really anticipating this i don't read a lot of middle grade but something about this sounds very special so hopefully it will live up to all of my expectations so that was my book haul aka my arc bea book haul i have to give a huge shout out to my girl christina at the lushables and also at christina reads ya because she sent me these amazing books she's such a sweetheart and she's also extremely intelligent she knows how to break a book down if you guys don't follow her already at the lushables make sure you do so. If you don't follow her blog, definitely check out her blog. I will leave the information in the, in the uh, box below. And also I will leave a link to her Goodreads because she's great at dissecting a book as far as its strong points and its weak points. So definitely check her out on Goodreads, YouTube, and her blog. And don't forget, these are not book recommendations. These are just books that are really interesting to me and I want to check them out. That's all I can say, so I can't vouch for them. And yeah. Complete side note, if you aren't already, you can follow me on Twitter at BB Amory. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm really hungry. You know when you get really hungry, you just your body starts moving or something. I think it's to distract you from the fact that you're starving. So I will be getting something to eat. I will leave you with this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a lot of books to read. I'm looking at the pile and it is pretty high. I will get started on that. No, I'm kidding. That would be a good segue though if I was like, and hey, I'll get started on the book now. Yeah, that's not happening. I'm gonna get started on something to eat. Until next time, don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Please share the video with everyone. Comment below. Let me know if you read any of these ARCs. Let me know what you're interested in. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye! I love it when colors just punch you in the face. And I wanted to amplify the color without making it too matchy-matchy, which is why I chose the red shirt with the bright orange shorts.